This is tutorial 4, case problem 1. We begin by opening a file called Kanai, and then we do a save as, and save it as Kanai Fjords Park. I've already done that. In the documentation sheet, you'll want to enter your name in cell B3, and the current date in cell B4. In step 2, they ask us to work with the Park Usage Data Sheet to select range A3 through D15 and to create a 3D column chart. So I'll go to Insert, Chart, Column Chart, and it's the last type of 3D column chart that we want. That places the column chart right in the middle of our screen. The first thing we're asked to do is to move it. So if we go up to our Chart Tools Design tab, and choose Move Chart, we can change it to a new location. We'll call this tab Monthly Visits. And now the chart is placed on its own sheet called Monthly Visits. Monthly Visits is directly to the right of our documentation sheet, which is exactly where we want it. We're asked now to choose a style, a Style 42. So we're going to find that under Chart Tools Design. Your styles are all shown in this list. And this is version 2013 of Excel, which doesn't have the same chart styles. But this one here is probably the most similar to it. So I'll choose this style. In the next step, they ask us to put a centered overlay title at the top of the chart. In version 2013, well actually all versions, you'll find it under the Design tab, but in 13 they have a little pull down, and this is where you'll find your chart titles. So we want a centered overlay title, and if I scroll up, you should see that. And then I'm going to highlight that, and I'll type in the new title. They also ask me to make sure that this is 24 point, so with it selected, I'll go to the Home tab and then we'll rock the point size up to 24. Next we want to put a vertical title on the side. So just like we did the chart title, we go to Design, we go to Add Chart Element, and this is going to be an axis title. This will be our primary vertical axis title. So we'll click, that inserts the title, we'll select this title, it's a little strange because it's sideways, but just highlight it and start typing and it works. And that title is going to be Monthly Visitors. They want it rotated 90 degrees, which it is already. A vertical title is 90 degrees. And then we want to change the font size of that to 14 points. So while it's still selected, I'll roll it up to 14. Step number seven asks us to rotate this 3D chart so that we can um, kind of turn it on its side a bit. For 3D rotation, we go to the Design tab. In version 2010 of Excel, you'll find a 3D rotation button right here on the ribbon. But in version 2013, you have to go over to the Add Chart Element, Axis, More Axis Options, it's this Effects button that you need. And in order to get 3D rotation, you have to select, select the chart area. Once I've selected the chart area, this opens up for me. And now I can make my choices. We're asked to change the X-axis rotation to 30 degrees. So we'll spin that up. And the Y-axis rotation to 20. We're also asked to change the perspective to 25 degrees. Now you can see that it's grayed out. The reason that it's grayed out is the right angle axis is set here. So if I turn that off, then I can modify it and take it to 25 degrees. They want us to have a depth, the percent of base, at 130. And so this is what the 3D rotation will look like on your chart. In step 8, we're asked to modify the depth axis so that we reverse the order, and that's what this is. 
They want to reverse the order and put others in the front because it's smaller and it's harder to see. So the way that you would do that is you'll go to your Chart Tools Format tab. And in 2013, we have to click a down arrow here to select our depth axis. And then we're going to format that selection. So that opens a dialog box for us. And you'll see here that you have a tick mark that you can turn on, Series in Reverse Order. When you do that, you can see that it flipped the order of our depth axis. In Step 9, we're asked to insert a data table without legend below our 3D chart. So the way we'll do that is we'll click on the Chart Tools Design tab. And again, in 2013, we have to select the element data table. And the one we want has no legend keys. And you can see it just at the bottom if I scroll down and click away. One problem I see with this is that we do have it, um, our, our legend is still there. So I'm going to highlight that and press delete. And that should straighten that problem out. Let's move on to step 10. In Step 10, we're supposed to change the fill color of the Visitor Center series to orange. The Visitor Center series is this series of red columns, and if you click one, you select all of them. If you right-click, you can format that data series, and one of your choices is your fill color. So we'll click on Fill, we'll choose a solid fill, and then we'll select our color. And I'll choose an orange and you can see that that has changed our visitor center color. In the park usage data worksheet we're asked to select two separate ranges from B3 through D3 and also B16 or the totals through D16. Now the way you select non-adjacent ranges is you hold down control key as you drag your mouse. Now that we've done that, we can insert a 3D Pi. So I'll choose Insert. Looking under the charts, I'll go to a pie chart, and I want a 3D Pi, and I'll click. And of course, it's placed the pie chart right on the middle of our screen. In step 13, we move the chart into the monthly visits chart sheet. So we'll choose Chart Tools Design and then Move Chart Location. We're going to embed it as an object in the monthly visits chart sheet. When I click OK, it will just sort of plop it in there. I'm going to select it and grab the corner and reposition it down in the corner and then I think I'll shrink it a little bit so it's not so obtrusive. And we'll move on to step 13. They want us to place a chart title called Total Visits above the pie chart. So we can just click on this chart title. We can highlight the material and then they want to set the font size to 16 point. So using our home tab I can spin that up to 16 make sure that that was selected. I'm not sure it was. So I'll try that again. And then they want to change the color of the font to white. So we'll go here and change it to white. Now the trouble is, is it's white on a white background. But we're going to change the background color to, um, to have no color. So if I click on the chart area here and then I go home I can go to a background fill and say no fill. And if I click away, you'll see how that's um, not filled the chart. Now again, I still think it's a little too big. So I think I'll just scooch it down a little bit. And when I click away, you can see that that's what it looks like so far. They tell us to remove the legend. So I'll click on the pie chart legend and just press delete. And they want to change the color of the visit visitor center slice to orange. To do that, I'll click on the pie itself. Now this selects all of the wedges. We just have to click again to make sure that we've only selected this red one. And then you can right click and format that data point. One of your choices is your fill color. 
and we'll make it a solid fill and an orange. In the next step, step 16, we're asked to add data labels to the inside of each slice displaying the slice's value. So we have to make sure that our pie chart is selected. We have to click on the pie chart itself so we're selecting the wedges and then go up to the chart tools design tab add a chart element and this would be a data label and we want our values on the inside of the end of each slice so if I click that I'll click away so you can see it that places those labels those value labels inside number 17 asks us to change the fill color of the chart area to none I've already done that Step 17 also asks us to remove the border from the pie chart. So I'll click right on the border, right clicking. I'll go to Outline and choose No Outline. And then when I click away, you'll see that that outline has gone away. Number 18 asks us to go to the Park Usage Data Worksheet and then to add data bars to the range B4 through D15. So let's highlight B4 through D15 and then we'll go to our Home tab, Conditional Formatting, and this is where you'll find data bars. They didn't tell us what color, so we'll go ahead and just choose uh, blue. And then they want us to change some of the values with the data bars. So that will also be under Home conditional formatting and since we've already got a data bar rule we'll go into manage rule and that will allow us to edit this. They asked us to set the maximum number to a hundred thousand so I'm going to click this and change it to a number and I'll type in a hundred thousand and click OK and click OK again and that will modify the size of those bars. Be sure to save your workbook before you close.